please remember to like the video and also consider subscribing. Now the details. Some residents of Discovery Bay in St. Anne took to the streets today to protest the rape and murder of eight-year-old Taylor Thomas in the community yesterday. Taylor was reportedly taken from her neighbor's home by the suspect who is alleged who raped her. He then reportedly stabbed her several times. She died on the spot. The suspect who then tried to commit suicide is now under police guard in hospital. Residents have expressed shock and grief at the incident. A St. Mary man accused of stabbing a teen girl several times earlier this month has been charged with attempted murder. Charged is 31-year-old Rain Samuels, otherwise called Bella, a laborer of Barriff Hall. Police say on September 19, at about 1 p.m., the teen was walking along a track when Samuels approached her and offered to show her something on his phone. The teen refused and was stabbed several times, allegedly by Samuels. She was discovered by residents and assisted to hospital where she was treated. Samuels was held by citizens, handed over to the police and was charged. A court date for him is being finalized. As the Ministry of Health and Wellness expands community strategies to contain the outbreak of dengue, there is a call for households to accommodate vector control workers. In the past, there have been reports of some vector workers being attacked while trying to carry out their duties. Public Health Officer with the St. Catherine Health Department, Judith Brown, says the work of the vector control teams is crucial in decreasing mosquito breeding sites, which will in turn help to reduce dengue fever in the country. Meantime, the public should expect weekly updates on dengue. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says dengue updates could be more frequent if the situation warrants it. He warned that the outbreak may last until year end, but Jamaicans can combat the health threat if the appropriate public awareness and response is implemented. Attorneys representing Andre Bryan and 14 others in the Klansman Wandon gang case today sought leniency for their clients who were found guilty of a number of offenses earlier this year. The court convicted Bryan for leadership of a criminal organization and six counts of facilitating the commission of a serious offense by a criminal organization. More in this report from Natalie Campbell. The others, Tom Rick Taylor, Michael Whiteley, Dylan McLean, Lamar Simpson, Tariq James, Stephanie Christie, Fabian Johnson, Jazeel Blake, Roald Taylor, Joseph McDermott, Jermaine Robinson, Andre Golding, Brian Morris, and Ted Prince were all found guilty of being part of a criminal organization. Six men were also found guilty of facilitating the commission of a serious offense by a criminal organization, while Roald Taylor was also convicted for illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. Brian was first to address the court, indicating to Chief Justice Brian Sykes that he wished to speak on his own behalf. The Chief Justice explained why he should have his lawyer address the court, but he maintained that he wanted to speak for himself. After being given time to read the relevant documents, he returned quoting several scriptures, indicating he had been reading the Bible a lot. He was asked by the judge to continue after the other attorneys made their mitigation pleas, as he seemed to have much to say. Meantime, Alexander Shaw, attorney for the sole female convicted Stephanie Cole Christie, asked for court for a reduced sentence. The maximum sentence for being part of a criminal organization is 20 years. He pointed out that she would invite her friends to church, stating that there was a constant struggle, though always at church, she found herself a part of a negative social group. He said it was her struggle that caused her to be in the present situation. The attorney said she had been in custody for the last four years and was not able to care for her teenage daughter and mother and that she was not beyond rehabilitation, adding that her community would be embarrassed and disappointed in her conduct. He said Miss Christie wants to go back to lead a better life. The other attorneys spoke to mitigating circumstances that should result in reduced sentences for their clients. Among the issues raised were the young age of some of the men and their lack of maturity at the time of the offences and their previous good character. The sentencing hearing continues in the Home Circuit Court tomorrow.
Efforts by the National Works Agency and WA to restore access to roadways in Portland are being hindered by continued rainfall. The heavy rains have resulted in several landslides and fallen trees. Teams from the NWA have been working since this morning to clear corridors. The fair prospect to Folly Main Road, as well as Breast Works to Windsor in the parish, have been reduced to single lane traffic as a result of debris from landslides and broken trees. There There are also reports of flooding occurring at the Stony Hill Fording in the parish. Meantime, Member of Parliament for East Portland, Anne-Marie Vaz, wants constituents to exercise extreme caution by avoiding flooded or blocked roadways. In a video post on social media, the East Portland MP showed roadways affected by landslides. The corridors have been reduced to single-lane traffic as rainfall continues to affect various sections of the parish. Mrs. Vaz urged residents not to risk exposing themselves to grave danger. A United States national who was charged in relation to last Friday's fatal crash on the Font Hill Main Road in St. Elizabeth was granted bail when he appeared in court today. Caleb Amphia Davis, a resident of Utah, is charged with causing death by dangerous driving. He was granted bail in the sum of $300,000. Amphia Davis is to return to court on November 23. Meantime, a second person who was injured in the crash has died. He is is taxi driver Hector Monroe. His death follows that of 31-year-old primary school teacher Daniel Blake, who died on Friday. Blake was a passenger in Monroe's taxi, which was traveling from a Black River towards Savannah Lamar when a Miss Debussy motor truck failed to keep left and crashed into the taxi. The eight occupants of both motor vehicles were taken to the Black River Hospital, where Blake was pronounced dead and the others were admitted for treatment. Monroe succumbed to his injuries today. Jamaica will protect 30% of its landmass by 2025. That's the commitment from Environment Minister Matthew Samuda. He was speaking during a tree planting ceremony at the Excelsior High School in Kingston this morning. The ceremony is one of several events being carried out in observance of Tourism Awareness Week, which commenced yesterday. This year's theme, Tourism and Green Investments, recognizes the urgent need for responsible tourism practices that that prioritize the well-being of the planet and its inhabitants. Minister Samuda explained that when compared to international standards, Jamaica is well on target to protect its landmass. Mr. Samuda said he plans to enlist the help of six farmers in schools across the nation to achieve the tree planting target before the deadline. Mayor of Kingston, Delroy Williams, is calling for more private sector entities to help implement smart technologies across the country to assist municipalities in the enhancement of services and public safety. The Jamaica Public Service, JPS, is spearheading a smart city project in the corporate area and Mayor Williams says he hopes more private entities will get on board. A smart city is a municipality that uses information and communications technology to increase operational efficiency, share information with the public, and improve both the quality of government services and citizens' welfare. Mayor Williams, who has hailed the Smart City Project as a testament to innovation and a beacon of hope and progress for the entire nation, called for deeper partnership from the private sector.